Well, there are two things in music. There's music, and there's the music business. And I think everyone that's here today is here today because they want to get involved and enhance their music business and have their involvement in that industry. So if you take your book here, your workshop book, you turn to page six, okay? This is actually, this is where we start here with the ownership and income section. I also want to highlight, not to sound like a lawyer, this is going to sound legal. If you turn to exhibit A and exhibit B, <laughs> there are um, some excerpts from Professor Remick's lecture that you can take with you. Make sure you read over those and different tips. Very, very helpful information. So let's start with ownership. Where does ownership come in music? Well, you have two, two forms. You have your two different copyrights. And everyone says, I know what copyrights are. You know, I, I send myself stuff in the mail. Well, that doesn't count. That's a, that's a myth. That's just a myth, all right? I'll give you the legal definition, and I'll put it in plain English. You own a copyright to anything that you reduce, any, an original expression of an idea that you reduce to a tangible form. So what's that mean in music? Okay, so if Chris Ryman writes a song, actually writes it down on paper, he owns a copyright to that music he wrote, that underlying musical composition. Okay, and then he says, you know what, Chris, I don't have a great voice. Do you know anyone who does? I said, Tanika Myers. You got to get with Tanika. And he gives that song to Tanika, and she records it. Tanika owns a copyright in the actual recording, okay? So you've got your two copyrights here. Forget record labels, forget all that stuff for a second. We're just talking, you know, pure ownership here. So, how do you register your copyright, okay? You don't send it to yourself in the mail. Again, that's just a myth. That may establish a date of creation. What you do is, for the actual recording, for that song Tanika recorded, the actual recording you here, that CD you had, okay? You want to send that to the Copyright Office, what's called a Form SR. If you turn to the Exhibit C, you will see there a Form SR, okay? Now you might say, well, how much does that cost? It costs $45 to register a copyright. The beauty, though, is that you can do a compilation if you're an artist and you're recording a lot of things. Maybe on an album, on a Paper Boys album, you take that one whole album and you send it in and you copyright it. Okay, and you do it as a compilation, as an actual album compilation, or maybe, you know, um, Phil Blanco, Volume 1, all your recordings from January to April, or whatever. Okay, and you just fill out that SR form, you list the songs, and you've now copywritten. You own those songs for $45, for all of them. The best, some of the best money you'll invest in this industry. You own that copyright for your life <coughs> plus 70 years. Okay, now I know some of you are saying, well, I do some stuff sometimes as a work for hire, or in my record deal, or in my production deal, it says that the recordings I do are a work for hire. What does that mean? What it means is you were paid a, an amount, and whoever paid you that amount then became the owner of that copyright. In a work for hire situation, you might want to write this down. The owner, the, the work for hire author, the person who paid you, owns that for 95 years. Okay? So it's just a little wrinkle there. So let's go back to Chris. Let's go back to my songwriter here, or my producer who writes beats, who does arrangements, who does instrumentals, or maybe my writer who writes lyrics. Think about what's written. Okay, that actual paper. That's a separate copyright altogether. You register that on what's called a PA form. And if you turn to exhibit D, you'll see a sample form PA. Same thing applies here that applies to the SR. You fill that out, you put yourself down as the author. Maybe two people wrote together, maybe two people collaborated. If they did, they put them, the two of them down as joint authors. The joint authors then own that copyright together for their life. I should say the, whoever lives the longest plus 70 years. So if Chris and I write together, and God forbid 
I peel off 10 years earlier. It stays with him. It stays with us for, the, for his life. Or when I say us, I mean whoever's surviving me, heirs, white, whatever. It stays with us for his life plus 70 years after. When you get into a situation where you register these, you want to make sure that you get that confirmation that the two of you have copies of everything, okay? That's how you kind of keep things in check. And another reason I, I brought up the joint writing situation is each of you own the right to do with what you want with that music. Now you're probably saying, hold up, that, that sounds a little contrary. Where it, but it's not. Your only obligation to each other, I'm just talking legally now, I mean, it makes good business practice to work together in the loop. But your obligation is to make sure that you account to that person. So for whatever reason, Chris and I co-write, and there's a hundred dollars that comes in, and we own it together jointly, he's to make sure I get 50 of it. If I receive the hundred, I'm to make sure he gets 50 of it. That's your, that's your composition portion there. You register that on your PA form, you register your recording on the SR form. So that's our nuts and bolts of music ownership.